Hi everyone, welcome to the LC Show and we are here sitting with Peter and Truffman in the Maker Bar. So this episode is going to be all about Computex and uh, guys, I think there's pretty much a lot of things to say about Computex. There was a OC competition, OC booth all over, the, all over the place, we had an OC gathering and a lot of everything. So let's get started, right? <laughs> Alright, so a lot of overclocking. Truffman, what, what, what is your first impression of Computex overall in terms of overclocking, of course? So overall, the Computex was a lot of overclocking, a lot of overclockers, a lot of demonstration that, uh, happening. Uh, I can't remember there was that many overclockers at the same uh, event uh, before. There was a lot of different events and the, um, we had a few competitions also on that. Yeah, a few competitions. A few is pretty uh, quite a lot. How many competitions are we so talking about? We had four competitions in total. Yeah. You had two of Intel, one of which was the Intel OC challenge with the, the professional overclocking teams yep. and then um, sort of the same event but with amateurs then. And we had the, the G-Skill World Cup and then the Hyperx uh, OC Takeover Lounge event, which was uh, also on invite basis, hmm. but um, it was a competition okay. for prize money. Yeah. So there was competitions, but there was also OC booths like we have the habit to see every year on Computex. Yeah, so there were there were there were a lot of um, companies having overclockers invited to the booth to like okay. uh, some of just to bench. Just to bench, like random yeah. benching, basically, like oh, you're there, like showing off. It's basically the overclockers yeah. booth page, if you can say. So, and so we did a little count right before the when we prepared the show, and I think we counted about seven booths in total. Yeah, seven yeah. booths, and we uh, we had a Facebook uh, event with HW yep. running where we invited, uh, we sent out invitations to asking everyone, are you coming to Computex? And in a total, 120 people said yes on that Facebook well, event. So all those guys are overclockers or is it a little bit of... It's an industry affiliation and, and partially overclockers. Yeah. I think it, it's, it's people that have an interest in that. Yeah, yeah. And, an estimate of over 50 overclockers for sure. Oh, that's it, pretty good. Last year was already pretty big and this year yeah. was probably even bigger, bigger. than that. Yeah. Okay. So 50 overclockers, more or less, a little bit more. Um, so the main, the main thing that made people come to this year's Computex was, I think, essentially uh, Intel's Devil, Devil's Canyon CPUs, So, right? yeah, the Devil's Canyon was launched for the Computex time. The, the D97 was launched a, bit, uh, a few weeks before. Um, but Intel had an event called Unleash the Beast. Okay. That was, uh, like, the first competition that it happened for, for the Computex week. Um, that was run for uh, pro clickers and amateurs at the same time. Uh, they were using the especially new, uh, newly launched uh, Intel Pentium anniversary, 20th anniversary editions. Okay. The, uh, the G3250. Well, they used, they used that one in the, in the HyperX competition, right? So That's the, right, yeah. The, yeah. the, the Unleash the Beast was to promote the, the Devil's Canyon, the 4790K yeah. in mm-hmm. particular, because that's the Password first... Password refresh, right? Yeah, but it's the first Intel CPU that ran at 4 gigahertz. 4 gigahertz stock frequency. Okay, it's yeah. not even the turbo frequency. That's the stock <laughs> frequency. And it's supposedly the better overclocker yeah. than the 4770K. And at the event, we saw um, the extreme, the, the pro teams with with extreme water cooling. They go to about 5.5 gigahertz in CPU Z validation with mm. uh, with all cores uh, and all threads enabled. And about maybe 4.8, 4.9 okay. through uh, Cinebench, for example, which is fairly similar to the 4770. It's a little bit better, but. Yeah, well, it's, if, if you're if you're depends, yeah, well. if you're a positively spirited person, then it's a slightly better. If For me, everything new is slightly better. At least <laughs> it has to be right. But I mean, it's it's interesting, right? Everyone yes. was looking forward to it uh, as well, and um, that's probably the reason why so many mm. vendors also invested in these overclocking events yeah. at Computex because Intel is going big on enthusiast yeah. market. So everyone this year. is like, okay, let's be all enthusiastic. Yeah. And, and I mean, the prize money in this event was ridiculous: twenty-five thousand yeah. US dollars for an overclock. So that's event. the biggest pricing ever, I think. Well, uh, that's yes. the biggest total price, 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 right? total total price, price yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. So, so you were talking about pro overclockers, and you were talking about brands being involved. Uh, how did that work then for this competition? Uh, so, so basically, the uh, each uh, each main manufacturers of mainboard uh, were invited to yeah. have a team there at the at the competitions. Uh, there were actually uh, f- up to four or five people. At four, yeah. Yeah. four, four yeah. people. So they, they had like some guys using the LM2 like regular like the CPU button and so on and some were stuck to uh, only one cooling, water cooling or air cooling, like something yeah. like anyone can do. So that. some so there was extreme, there was a little bit of kind of air cooling, enhanced air cooling thing mm-hmm. if you were clever about it. And there was also amateurs 
on the side of that competition, mm -hmm. which was, was a, basically a second competition at the same time. It was eight amateurs who could play around with the yeah. 4790K with just a Cooler Master all-in-one cooler. And actually, they hit pretty much the same results like the pro teams. Yeah. Uh, because is the ambient air was cooled down by the island too? Or? Uh, no, I don't think so. It was, it was very <laughs> warm. Very good AC. Venue. Very warm yeah, yeah. in the venue. But they had 4.8 through XTU as well. Okay. Yeah, so so it fair, fair enough yeah, then. It yeah. wasn't that much of a big difference between the pro teams and the amateurs. So those amateurs were they all amateurs or they were experienced overclockers? Well, the thing is that... Um, the people already had to fly themselves to Computex, yeah. right? And regular folks, the average show is not going to fly to Computex to participate in this amateur event. Yeah, unless you're press or something. Yeah, exactly. Like that, so yeah. it was a combination of fairly experienced overclockers, but also mm. a couple of real amateurs, people that okay. don't use LM2 at mm. all. Oh, that's pretty cool. So every every vendor that participated in the pro won something, right? So yeah, that's the thing. There, there was uh, there were five vendors: there was uh, Gigabyte, Asus, uh, MSI, EVG, and Astra. Yeah. And they at the end of the at the end of the day the twenty five thousand dollars cash price that was split again different benchmark and different uh, uh, ranking cool. yeah, cool. yeah. yeah every vendors Want went something. back home with something they all won something and that is quite important to to have this uh, this momentum because that's the biggest price well I we guess yeah no one wants to lose right that's always. And you don't want to make it as a competition where you point out the loser or you point out a winner. And I think it's pretty good that everyone, everyone can show up. It's not very to different be good at compared something. to last year where at the, the Corsair Intel OC main event, Asus was basically yeah, running there was, with There was no rampage of winning everything yeah. this time, right? So on the same day of that Intel competition, there was also another competition starting, which was the OC World Cup by Gscare, right? Yeah, the Gscare OC World Cup, they had the, on their booth, they had actually the World Cup and the OC stage uh, side by side. The OC stage is pretty much like last year, that uh, mm. it's just inviting uh, overclockers and being sponsored by different manufacturers to overclock like one day per manufacturers and break some records. Uh, they actually broke the six world records, from right? Yeah. yeah. So they call it the record stage, right? That's that was yeah. the OC world record stage. And the second one was the um, the biggest one, with the qualification going on on HWBot before. Uh, that was the uh, G-Skill OC World Cup. So I think Peter, you can tell more yeah. about the uh, qualification it an, process. It was an interesting competition. Um, because it's the first time that a, such, such a large amount of money was given to the winner of an overclocking yeah. competition. It's 10,000 US dollars for the winner. It's never ever seen before. And the process was, was actually very interesting as well. So you had to qualify online and the top six would be able to uh, participate at the Computex uh, qualifiers, live qualifiers. The, the, the thing is though that in all other competitions before, the event organizer would fly out the, com the competitors, put them in hotels, not in this competition. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have a shot at the 10,000 US dollars, you had to fly yourself out. You had to invest in your own chances yeah. to maybe win the, the, that mm -hmm. large sum of money. Yeah. yeah. So you have one, you have to invest in your qualification, invest in your flight, invest in your hardware for the c competition there, yeah. unless you get like a, maybe motherboards from the different vendors, but still. We can assume that yeah. all the people that are I think all of them, yes. for these kind of events, they already have the right CPUs and they already have the right motherboards yeah. as well, right? And they could, you're not they trying, could right? bring it with them for this competition. Well, especially so if you're that. competing against I people like Ed Pack or I mean, you have to be the lineup pretty, was, you have to was be impressive. pretty prepared. Yeah. It was uh, Zero Dan, it was Hero, Eight Pack, Extreme Addict, Splave, yeah. and their Bauer. So, so it's a pretty high top, top quality top guys, yeah. competition, yeah. So it, oh. was, it was pretty, um, how were the rankings for that competition? Was it pretty yeah. tight until the end? The way, the way it turns, so as Peter said, the qualification got first on the bot and then for for the four or five days of the Computex, they had live qualification to the final. Okay. So it was like a one versus one uh, system. So okay, it's like, yeah. uh, say you had a Debrower against another guy, and these guys competing, and after that, only two of them are actually have access to the final. So okay. per day, it was always two time slots where there's two okay, people yeah, competing. Yeah, yeah. So four people on, 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 on one the day, stage four the time, slots yeah. in one day. And after three days, we just you, you, you make a, um, a sum of all the points and you compare all the scores. And then okay, two, yeah, the two yeah. best can go continue to oh, the final. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and then yeah. on the final day, and this is also pretty interesting, there were three benchmarks. One of them was picked by G-Skill and was obviously memory clock. But then each of the finalists 
APEC and SPLAVE could pick their own benchmark. Okay, so they had and to strategize on the whatever they were good at or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? exactly. So if you if you if you know that you're good at SuperPy 32M and your opponent is not good at it, you, you're gonna pick SuperPy 32M. Yeah. So that's APEC went for a Fire Strike because he okay. knew he had the best graphics card and the best CPU, <laughs> and then SPLAVE went for SuperPy 32M 5G because he knows that he's yeah. a lot better than that uh, than APEC. Yeah. So in the end, it just it all came down to this memory clock, and That's SPLAVE cool. ended up having 4 megahertz more than 8-pack. So the really difference close. between having 10,000 or I think 1,500 yeah. US dollars was 4 megahertz on the memory validation. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? Because if you compare this to athletism, like it's also the those nanoseconds or whatever, you can throw yourself over the line. This is like megahertz mm -hmm. battle, right? That little thing extra that makes the difference. It's and you could see the, the guys on stage were actually nervous and they were... Especially the last hour. Yeah. Of, yeah. Especially the last hour. Uh, the last hour was crazy. You were there all the time for the last. I was day, there right? for the last uh, last last hours, and Splay didn't even submit the first track. He just submit the score for Fire Strike Extreme, but he knows that he will, he will not even be able to to catch that. He needed to have a score for Fire Strike because the system was built in a way that you get one point if you get a score yeah. up. So if you don't submit, if you don't submit anything, you don't have a score up, so you lose that one point. Yeah. Yes. Even with that score, it right? just ran out stuck, yeah. and then switch back to. Uh, it's a strategical win, yeah. I suppose. That's what we were saying in the in the what well, that will connect with the, the next topic, which is the the HyperX competition. But during that live, we were discussing about submitting or not submitting if you have the chance mm -hmm. or not. And actually, having a system where you get a point for at least submitting something, so at least being competitive, mm -hmm. right? And it's always a good strategic move to at least run stock once, submit it. Okay, it's not a great score; everyone can get that, but. Yeah. So better than, better than nothing. End up in, this, in this, in the G school competition, you needed to win two out of three stages. Yeah. So it was very, very simple, very simple setup. But okay. still, you could pick your own stage. I liked it. Okay, well, that was nice. The like one versus one, uh, I do like it. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's what about what about having that on the Computex show floor? What that was a noisy? Whether the problem for concentration or the it comes down. It's the same like Usain Bolt running in in a, in a full stadium at the Olympics, yeah. right? It's not silent there either. So, I mean, if you're if you're a top competitive overclocker or a top yeah. athletic ath athlete, you're supposed to figure out ways to focus yourself. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, concentration, earplugs, or I saw. Like, I think their, their bower was yeah. always with the ears, yeah, yeah, yeah with the earplugs. Yeah, because yeah, on the show floor, you know, yeah, they have the booth page. You have a commentary sometimes. And noise people passing by maybe asking questions and you're competing so it's serious stuff all right second competition well third competition actually now is the hyperx competition and that one took place on the day following the intel event right? it was on, a, on the thursday on the third, oh, thursday, oh, thursday yeah. so the, the, the day ah, after, the day after. after that yeah so that was the hyperx uh, overclocking takeover and that was actually the official event to launch the complete season of the uh, hot events okay so hot stands for hyperx OC, OC takeover. takedown take 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 over. Take over. All right. So that that's gonna be a series of competition all through the 2014, 2015, right? It's a it's a, a similar setup like last year. So last year was the first Hyperx OC takeover with yeah. one online qualifier, and then they had the finals at CES. Yes. And now they had a, a launch event at Computex, which was inviting uh, vendor teams as well as inviting uh, just teams of normal overclockers. Okay. I, I would say, and this was the launch event to um, or the prelude to the new season. Okay. The new season will have four online qualifiers and then again a final at CES. Um, hmm. the, f the final at CES, we're actually going to have fifteen thousand US dollar in cash prizes, which okay. is five thousand US dollar more than last year. Yeah, okay. And, and there's, the, there's, there's also going to be more than the one that we had. They, they just had yeah, computing. So this one was ten k as well, not ten k for the winner, but ten k spread around. There were three different benchmarks, and yeah. then the top three of each of those benchmarks had okay. a cash price. All right. So you're talking about. Vendors is was, was that the same way that the, for example the the Intel event it's, it was it's, it's the too? same basic way only that uh, there was only two member per teams okay uh, the all the same teams that were at the uh, at the Intel event went to the uh, yeah to the HyperX event except Asus that had no team there. Uh, I think that was uh, Joe Nani Bior from Brazil that took back uh, the spot yeah. from uh, yeah. So from that. there was Vendor's team, but there was also standalone overclocker teams, yeah, right? That they was were mixed. not like officially supported by, but they were still benching different things. So there was, uh, I, I think I remember during the live stream, it was interesting for that competition to see uh, Team AU and Team Gigabyte basically face face to face, and they were both 
competing against each other, but still you had Dino in between playing the manager. <laughs> and that was pretty cool to see. It was, I think it's the first time I see someone like, you know, taking that role of manager during a live competition. And it was pretty, pretty and interesting. That, that, that was interesting because at the same time they had the Hyperx gaming events on the, on the big scene and uh, the Overclocking uh, Commission was on the side. And uh, you can see that it was everyone was so close together and people were like, oh, I did try that, it's not working, just going to ask the next one. Even if there's cash involved, there's still no sharing some uh, yeah. information. So they're sharing information, uh, big cash prize, uh, teams of vendors, and what about, um, you said Benchmark, it was XTU, SuperPi, and um, Memory, Clock. Memory Clock, of course. Um, so I remember from the announcement, there was this secret CPU, right? And this we talk already a little bit about it for the OC yeah, event so from Intel. But Intel was launching two, two, C, two new CPUs. Yep. Uh, you had the Devil's Canyon, which is the 4790K, as well as the 4690K. And then you have the Pentium Anniversary Edition, which is um, a, a special SKU to celebrate 20 years of Pentium branding. Mm -hmm. And the special thing about this Anniversary Edition is that it's an unlocked dual-core CPU. Okay. Something that Intel haven't been... It's so very important to know that this yeah. is not a K-SKU. It's, it's an Anniversary Edition. So, so people so call it Pentium K, but it's, that's the, just a, yeah, it's not a community appellation mm -hmm. naming. But the the official right. name of the CPU is the G3258. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Okay, so that, that Pentium is not like a killer of performance, right? It's just a, it's a celebration CPU, it's just... The, the, the Pentium Anniversary Edition has two cores but no yeah. hyper-threading and only three megabytes of cache. Okay, um, so yeah. So the performance is, in, it, it's very competitive in HW Prime, for example, where it can, which, which is a benchmark mainly scaling with the, the frequency. Yeah. But in XTU or Cinebench, yeah. it's a lot less competitive against, for example, Core i3, which has the hyper-threading enabled, right? Yes, yes. Um, and another, another issue, another problem, I, I suppose, with this anniversary edition is that these CPUs are very low bin. These are... Okay, so th there's CPUs. no reuse. These CPUs are not sorted. It's yeah. just a, it's just a, the same 3200 uh, Pentium, but or the, 30, the 3250 uh, yeah, Pentium, a, but just unlocked. Just unlocked, yeah. So because these are they're lo low bins, the the ver the variance between yeah. the different the CPUs, the it's gonna be huge. <coughs> yeah. So there will be there will be some very crappy ones uh, yeah. in terms of overclocking, of course, and some that will scale like. As a competition, we saw we saw a, ver a variance between 5.5 and 6 gigahertz right. on LN2. Yeah, so, so that is that is massive. quite large yeah. difference, yeah. But so the, the advantage is that they're only sixty five euros. So, so even <laughs> if it's no good I can just buy a new so, one. So we have those guys that buy like I don't know, fifty, forty seven, seventy Ks and those guys what they're gonna I think if the price is like four times less, they're just gonna buy like the, the, official, of them. <laughs> the official price is below eighty yeah. US I think. Well like about seventy five yeah. something. Since we are talking about pricing, we can talk also about availability. Like uh, I went to the stores here in Taipei, and I could not find yet any of those CPUs. And I asked the guys, and you know, because sometimes here they have it in before in stock, but they kind of they wait. But if you ask enough, they they give it to you, right? And here they 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 said it's probably not going to come to Taipei. It's not listed in there. So I don't know what is the how much how much of stock is there going to be. About there is a, there is an obvious concern that. If there is too many uh, 3258s being sold, mm. overclocking, it will eat into the Core i3 um, yes. market share. So well, Core i3 still has. Uh, yeah, but still it's, has it's a concern. But for, yeah. for people that have had the J concern and just want to get something yeah. to get the work done. Well, yeah. I pretty much see it still uh, being a very overclocking. I like mean, I think that's most, right? most of the people that will buy that is just to try overclocking and just have yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. So. This stopped all the overclocking competitions for Computex. That was the last major competition. And after that, there was still two, one or two days of benching. And the last day, there was the final of the G-Skill, which was following everything of that. And at the same time, HWBot started their own events so on Friday. On Friday. Uh, we, start, we set it up the venue, and I think most people started really benching CSG on Saturday, right? So what was this event about? So. Um because HWL exists for 10 years now, we had a small, <laughs> we had a small <laughs> gathering uh, after Computex. Basically, the same thing that we did last year, but now we just had an open event for yeah. everyone. So last year, every, uh, every vendor had their own day where everyone would go to the office and bench there. And yes. then today, uh, sorry, uh, at, at Computex, we just had, okay, let's do it yeah. one weekend and you can bring anything you want. Uh, you can bench anything uh, you want. We just provide you the venue. We provide you some about 2,000 liters of LN2 and just 
yeah. have a very relaxing weekend after Computex. Yeah. So of course, all those, all those even have some price to produce, right? So I guess there were some partners involved for financing the event and making, sure, sure. making it happen, right? Uh, the, the partner of that event were um, Gigabyte, NMX, Cooler Master, Jilid, and G-Skill. G-Skill. Yeah. So yeah, all, like those major guys that we see on Computex are also the same major guys baking that kind of event, right? Like, I think it's pretty positive. Everyone was very happy about the yeah. event. Everyone liked it a, a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, you guys did some interviews as well, some very yeah, interesting yeah. ones. But you guys can check them out. Yeah, that's some pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I think this is definitely something that we should do again in, in the future. Maybe not an anniversary gathering, but just gatherings in general. Yeah. Well, some guys said, see you at the gathering for the 20 years already. Sure. So <laughs> yeah, A lot of people are expecting to do that again Yeah, in the, in the near future. Uh, I think that would be very interesting to 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 expand that uh, that kind of concept yeah. for for to make it more accessible for for people after. Yeah. So there was about I counted fifteen I think fifteen officially be, uh, reserved tickets for the bench spots. So the bench spots were basically you get a piece of table, you get access to the LN2, uh, you can get a board from Gigabyte if you want to bench Gigabyte. You have a you can get the LN2 thanks to GSkill financing the LN2, and then you get also everyone got a jelly solutions, thermal paste, and cool master power supply and NMX power supplies, supplies as well. So if you want to run two power supplies, you can get two. Um, they, those guys in total, I think there was 25 to 30 people coming, overclockers being here and sitting around, benching, having yeah. fun. Uh, what's the plan to uh, maybe scale up a little bit and involve more people, give the, make it more accessible, right? To, to well, we don't people. have a, a concrete plan right now, but obviously, since everyone liked it, if we, if we get a, a city that is not on an island in the far east, but maybe in the middle of Germany or the middle of Europe, yeah. for that matter, it, it should be more accessible for more people. Yeah. It, to, to, to get a flight to Taipei just for a, for a gathering event is... It's a bit expensive. It's maybe a bit too expensive. Yeah. Yes. Even though there's all the vendors around and you could still, like, it's still... Yeah, quite well, a you have to pay around 800 yeah. to 1,000 euros, euros, right? Yeah. So. That's right. Yeah, that's now one uh, one big thing was we did uh, on the overclocking, overclocking TV side we did the live uh, yeah. along the weekend so that was basically four days of live um, not four days of live nonstop yeah I mean like we, 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 had we, to we did forty eight hours <laughs> nonstop but yeah. we, did, we had to get to sleep at some point um, in total I think there is more than six hundred twenty five days of uh, of time watched for the for this uh, for this event so that that was the that's probably the, For us, the that's, best. That's the one of the best events we ever had on the live. I mean, uh, even if you add up all the live stream that we've done so far, it's probably just reaching that number in terms of total exposure you get mm -hmm. from an event. And there was a lot of questions, a lot of people really interested, right? Yeah, that was an, an interesting move. That the the viewers that we had on the on the live stream were very interested in what was going on, what kind of hardware we were using, yeah. why we were using this hardware, the hardware from the sponsors. Uh, we we did our outline that uh, the the sponsor that were here, here and people that that have questions around that. The, I remember that the last day we did I think like five or six hours live nonstop of commentary. Yeah, it was so much so intense that you had to be three guys to take care of the questions and answering yeah. the chat. I mean, like I could not even read some of the stuff. It was just it appears and it's gone. gone. <laughs> so something you want to put play pose on the chat and yeah, take mm -hmm. the time to answer. But that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is all for the gatherings and competitions, and but that was not it, right? Computex is also about booths and it's also about people hanging around for drinks and other things. So um, what else did happen for Overclockers at Computex? Well, so we had, the, we had an OC gathering in the weekend, but yep. earlier that week, I think on a Wednesday, Galaxy organized the Overclockers night, which was a uh, um, it took place in an all-you-can-eat Japanese barbecue, yeah. and a whole bunch of overclockers attended that one as well, which was pretty nice. It was basically it was barbecue and beer. <laughs> that was all you can Unlimited, eat, all right? you can drink, basically. Yes. That, that's that's this. And uh, the fact is that was uh, Galaxy and uh, and Matt from Hong Kong that were like organizing this uh, this little event, and that was basically like free for every overclockers that want to, to join us for no, I don't try. So we end up having a lot of people, a lot of overclockers in the middle of the week of the computer week that is yeah. very intense that just lay down, relax, uh, everyone talk together, have some fun. So that was a nice break in the in between the week. Wow. Um, 
You had some very nice. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah very nice. Like, yeah, we, we've got some pretty cool like group pictures. I think it's probably the the picture with the most overclocker on one shot I've seen so far. In the restaurants, drinking beer and having a lot of food. Well, if you make it that specific, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So that was the galaxy night, but there was also some other uh, some other things happening on the. So on the you, show have, floor, you have right? the the regular Compitex trade uh, trade floor um, where everyone has their own booth. So we had um, I think we had Osrock, Galaxy was doing something, MSI was doing something, yeah. Sonic and Zodek were doing something, right. mm -hmm. and then Gigabyte had their booth. Not on not in Nangang, but the. the Yeah, they have the one-on-one -on -one booth. But they had right? the one-on-one -on -one booth, yeah. That booth is pretty cool, actually. I like to see the the whole city of Taipei. And <laughs> they, they, have, they have always always been there for, for a while Since now. GoC 2008? Yeah. Yes? I, I think, think that was the first time I, I saw that booth. So, yeah. so I mean, in, in all these booths, people just bench freely and they, they yeah. demo the, 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 the newest hardware of each of the, of yeah. the vendors. Um, I think as Rock had two world records, one with the XTU 4 core and then the yeah, full CPU-Z yeah. frequency and then Galaxy had a whole bunch of 3D yeah. mark records. Yeah, SF3 was there and he was really focusing on... But they had, I think, dual card records and then they also had the overall uh, Fire Strike Extreme yeah. with, mm -hmm. with four GTX 780Ti's. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty impressive. So overall, the Galaxy booth was um, OC Winforce and Little Boy, the Korean guy, uh, yeah. Matt, and SF3D from Finland. Yeah. And Doxan from and Japan. And Doxan from Japan. Doxan from Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Japan. So they, they were like benching all along the week to, like all, all day of computer tech they were there and doing yeah. something. Okay. So they, they did focus on that. Then there was the MSI booth, I remember I saw uh, the guys from Jagat Review, so there was... So um, Looking Up and Coldest, yeah. and also there were uh, the two French speaking guy, uh, Pepino and PT1T PT as usual. Sure. And then on the, for example, on the Astro booth it was... Uh, Splave, Nick Shi and then Shi Oh yeah, 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 right. And and what about Zodak then? Who was so Zodak was only Nacho Arroyo from Argentina. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, that was a um, join between yeah. Sonic and uh, and Zodak to do to do that. It's the um, it's the first time we see Zodak have been benching on. No, I think right? they did that or last like, year already. Yeah, no, not last year. Like two years, two or three years ago. Okay, or maybe yeah. that was at Sebi. That come. Yeah, Sebi. Remember yeah, which I remember one was they it? But they already had that. Sebi, the, yeah. They already had this, this okay. in the past. It was interesting. Wow. And the uh, Gigabyte booth in yeah. the uh, in the uh, Taipei 101 was actually uh, Sophos, Cookie, Dinos that are actually working for Gigabyte. Uh, Sin 0822, uh, Dakoza, and Sniper, Sniper also. From, uh, so pretty much the whole, almost the whole Team AU team, um, besides James that was on the GSQ booth all yeah. week. James was also a judge, right, on the... Yes, yes. Yeah. so you had right. three... Uh, the, the, the <laughs> <G -scale laughs> this guy in. had a pretty busy schedule. He was <laughs> Vivi and James, and they had to both do the uh, world record stage, mm. and then uh, each had one day yeah. as a judge. At the, at the competition too. Wow, all right, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, Computex was also the place of some announcements, of course. And I think for me, at least for me, the, the major and the most interesting announcement of all was probably the LN2 board from Gigabyte. Yeah, that one was nice. It's, it does uh, disruption in the market. So it, is, it is, yes. It's so the, basically they took a board and then removed the holes for the CPUs so they can get the the RAM set closer to the CPU circuits, so... Well, what they wanted to do is optimize the, 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 the traces, traces for, yeah. the, for the memory, to, uh, to have the highest memory overclocking. And so, it worked out. So one thing you do is you move the memory slots closer to the CPU, so the trace length is shorter. But also those holes... Uh, you, you, have to, you have to go around. You have to so go around them. So if you remove sure. them, you can just go in a straight line. Straight, yeah. You don't have to... Um, And tweak, tweak the trade. Since then, two pots are already really heavy. I mean, you can always, in the worst case, put the bracket to push them down, and that's it, right? So, so those holes are not necessary for us. The board was pretty successful because they broke the memory frequency world record on the first day on their press on the uh, on the press, press conference day, yeah. and later on they did the same at the uh, Intel OC challenge, and then again at the yeah, HyperX. 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 So they should see as well. They basically broke three times their own world record yeah. the, along the week. And now they're they're very close at DDR3 4600, and allegedly actually already yeah. have this record. I suppose yeah, there's backup scores for... The interesting thing about, <laughs> about this board is though that it's, it's supposedly going to be retail, yep. but so far, so far no one's been able to purchase one. So we, we're this going to have to... Retail and limited edition. So, so it's definitely limited. a small yeah. kind of quantity then, I guess. Uh, it's definitely uh, a limited board, but then 
are we actually going to be able to buy it in the store? Uh, well, so I'm, sure, I'm sure we, we are all one. Gongwa, yeah, yeah, we can we can go check. But I'm sure we are a lot of people interested by buying this board just for the memory p- p- sake of it. Not like that we, we want to buy that. There's a there's a lot of other classics that actually have pretty good RAM kits. And I'm pretty sure it's worth giving it a shot. If you can get hold of the board, everyone's going to try it out, right? Okay. Was there anything else that um, captured your attention on computer? Best computex ever? Yeah. Personally, I didn't really have the time to go around the, the show floor. I mean, I was, I it was too busy, right? Yeah. I, I just spent actually two days at the, on the show floor by itself. Yeah. Uh, it seems less busy than, uh, than the year before. Uh, I've been coming to computex for five, six years now. Yeah. So it was less busy than it feel less busy than before. Uh, all the D97 main board were already announced a few weeks before, so all the oh. running, uh, having a new board was not there because it was already yeah. launched. Um, there was the David Canyon CPUs by Intel. The anniversary Pentium anniversary also launched by Intel for that. Um, but overall, the most interesting was uh, there was not that many events. There was a lot of events last year in, in overclocking, but this year was even better than that. Mm. And I, I can't wait for next year. I was busy every every day just yeah. with the overclocking stuff, so I didn't even go around and. Busy watch. means less party as well, right? Oh yeah, I didn't go for a party. <laughs> only the I did on only one party night. Only Friday night. Yeah, I did only well, we all movie. did the same party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah, that was it, guys, for Computex. I think we are all looking forward for Computex next year. Yeah. Um, I mean, seriously, this year is going to be like insane if there's the HyperX thing going on. Well, yeah, so for overclockers, actually, this is not the end. This is actually this just is the, the start, that's the start right? of those. Yeah, yeah, so the in the next coming month, you're going to be able to qualify for MOA and then the HyperX yeah. HOT as well. And have the finals of MOA as well, because all this is going to come within the next five months. Yes, so it's going to be busy. Yes, insane. So I guess we will see you guys after the summer or just right at the end depending when is the next issue of the overclocker thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel give us a thumbs up or down if you don't like it and yeah see you around thanks guys for joining thanks for watching thanks